Pre recording. Hey there, everyone. It's Maureen McCann here with Spartan Invest, and I have got uh, on the screen with me here one of my favorite uh, lenders in the country, probably one of the best lenders in the country, um, and that would be Aaron Chapman with Security National Mortgage Company. Um, and I wanted to welcome here, welcome him onto this call because. You know, there's a lot of people that are affected and thinking they're going to be affected by this COVID-19. And I know a lot, there's a lot of uncertainty in the market and many of you are looking for certainty um, in uncertain times. And so I thought this would be a great platform. One of, first, one of the first videos that we'll be doing here to really help talk about um, and identify your situation, what you're in, and then what are some of the options for you um, if you find yourself either over leveraged in a tight spot, maybe this is a time to re, um, you know, kind of rethink your whole business, your real estate investing business. And so we're going to talk a little bit about um, that here with Aaron um, and some other topics and just some other options that you may have um, at your disposal, because we know that there might be some worry, there might be some um, concern about your real estate holdings. And the thing is, we want, we want you to hold on to them. We want you to be able to make those monthly payments. We want the renters to be able to pay. And so far, here we are in March, and we've got uh, the rent, you know, more than half the rent is in. So um, not necessarily a situation right now, maybe in the future, but let's just talk about where we are right now. And I know, Aaron, you've been fielding a lot of questions from um, your borrowers about, um, you know, first of all, it's like the rates are dropping. I need to refinance. I got to do this all right now. So kind of just give me a temperature check of, of the phone calls that you're getting and the information that you're sharing out with them. Well, number one, thanks for contacting me and being willing to chat with me and bring me onto the call. And so it's cool to have been able to make it to that status of one of the favorite lenders of Maureen McCann. Now, if I can get to favorite, favorite people, that that's when I'm done. That's I can pretty much just hang it up. Call, I've, I've reached my pinnacle. I can go about life and retire. But retirement's not going to happen because when I go to the grave, I'm coming in hot. No, uh, they can't hear you. So when you do that, that You're doesn't so look close. really good. You're so close to be my favorite person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that that helps. Doing this right here with no noise doesn't work good. So uh, y y what you described is right. The calls are amazing. They started to kind of taper down a little bit because I decided since I was getting, I guess it was the upwards of, you know, a couple, at least a couple hundred calls a day. I can begin to tell you the emails are coming in. I'd be on a five minute, well, a 10, 15 minute phone call. I'd have two pages of texts on my phone asking questions about the market. So I decided at that point, just instead of using that thing, my phone just for the calls to click the, the camera button and record. So I started recording videos and having my marketing guys shooting those out every few days. And it's, it's, it seems to have helped a lot of the questions. The main questions had to do with the interest rates, right? You know, the market, the, uh, the, the media has successfully marketed rates being at an all time low. The problem of it is it took too damn long to get it all out there. And then two, the market shifted on us due to the virus and uncertainty and, and extreme volatility in the market and all this. It actually pushed the interest rates up significantly. We were in the very low fours right as you came into March. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to people about locking. And I had a lot of people tell me, it's like, ah, now we're not ready to uh, rate a lock yet because they say it's going to get better. I'm like, okay, yeah, we'll hold off. That's fine. And then literally one day, everything flipped around. And it went from low fours all the way up to 5.6, 5.7%. I mean, we were knocking on 6%. And so I did a, did a video to help people understand what drives the market. It's not, it's not the Fed. You know, he, they have some influence. They don't drive interest rates at all, especially when it comes, they, they drive it between banks. That's a whole other story. Um, it's not what the 10 years doing, because we're talking about 30 year instruments. How could a 10 year bond fund a 30 year instrument? It does not correlate, but somehow somebody out there said that one day and the whole world believed it. So then we start talking about the 30 year fixed mortgage backed security. So I've encouraged all my clients to go and watch the movie, the big short, uh, cause that, explains the origination of the mortgage backed security. It's also entertaining, keep the kids out of the room, that kind of thing. Get to, you have a reason to tell them to go somewhere else, you know, because one, you're a better parent by not letting them watch it, at least not now. So then once you understand that, I, I encourage them to go to uh, mortgagenewsdaily.com slash MBS, looking at the, the U, 
uh, UMBS 4.0 coupon. That's the closest we can get to really showing what the mortgage backed securities are doing. It's not exact, but it's close. And, and they're skyrocketing right now. In fact, I'm doing I'm going to do a share screen right now so I can show everybody what's happening with there. Awesome. This is um, unprecedented. Uh, I don't know if you can see this right here, but you'll see along here. I'm going to zoom into a one month uh, target here. These are normal trading days that on the left side of this chart. Each one represents a day. This this one here that my cursor is on, that's a big trading day. You know, that was on fe uh, February 27th. That was a rather big day. You know, the top of the market on March 8th was also a very big day. But then look at the massive movement we had over here. And today is huge. Today's a big swing back into bringing the market back in line where it used to be. The problem of it is when you're talking volatility like this, it doesn't immediately translate to rate. Because if it can move that, that quickly up, it can move that quickly back. Mm -hmm. So nobody's going to start putting their, their, their neck on the line and start putting their head out under the guillotine and say, I'll offer this rate and this price to you and guarantee it, knowing that the market could turn around and take it back from in an instant. So we need to get back to this semblance of normal trading days like we're seeing here. If this settles in for a couple of days along those lines and away from this crazy volatility, look at this one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about 12, 13 trading days. And we, we gained it all back in one damn day. You know, you can imagine nobody's willing to do that, right? So since that's the case, anybody who's keeping an eye on this, you know, know that once we start getting that, that little bit of a level, we can start watching it much closer. And I know that the, I believe if we can maintain this within the next few days, I'm going to lock myself in a room and have all the, 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 at least the sustenance I need to maintain life for that day and just lock. And I may not even call anybody. I might even just, call, I might just shut off my phone, just lock, 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 lock. Cause some people, cause I know if I talk to somebody and the market smoothed out, let's say I can get mid fours again for zero points. What do you think is going to be the next question of anybody? I say, Hey, guess what? Our rates got better. What do you think they're going to ask me? Are they going to go any lower? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Maybe I should wait. You're, Maybe I should wait. <laughs> yeah. Do you think we can get down into the threes? So the problem here is let's think about that. Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. But also consider this. If it took all of this to get back, right? We took all that big old beating. And what's happening here right now, there's a lot of news about this new, new um, um, cure for, I don't want to call it a cure, but it's a vaccine for the, for the virus. Mm -hmm. Well, if we if we now all of a sudden have that, well, now we're seeing this improved movement. And then what happened? Also, the Fed said we're going to dedicate trillions to uh, as more quantitative easing for the for the uh, the economy. That's what moved it back. Complete freak out in the form of humans not being able to hold their shit. Completely crashed the economy globally, and it takes several trillion dollars being dedicated by the Fed, and then a vaccine being potentially in place. For us to crawl back, what happens if one of those things starts to fall apart? Yeah. They say, ah, sorry, that vaccine ended up turning out to be better for something else. Or the Fed says, ah, we thought we had this few trillion bucks, but maybe not. Then what? We're going to lose even more ground. Don't wait. Let's just jump on it and move forward. You know, it's kind of like where we're at today. You know, you and I talked several times about this. Um, now is not the time for people to start stepping backwards and, you know, let me see what's going to end up happening here. You know, Warren Buffett talks about when there's blood on the street, he gets greedy, right? <laughs> you know, and, and, go ahead. No, I was, I was agree with you. I would say that, um, you know, he has, everyone knows that, that, that quote he has. It's like that when, when people get greedy, uh, when people are fearful, be, uh, hold on, hold on, I'm going to mess it up now. I'm messing it up. Um, when people are fearful, be greedy. And when people are greedy, be fearful. And we are in that time where people are fearful. So it's really a time to be greedy. And I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with what you're saying is because businesses or investors that choose to freeze right now and sit back and just wait to see what happens, they're either the businesses are either going to go broke because they're not doing anything. They're not pivoting. They're just freezing. And the investors, the same mm -hmm. thing could happen to them. You're missing out on tremendous opportunities, especially when you're looking at a hard asset that shows over time it appreciates that you will get cash flow from it. Um, you have tax relief from it from depreciation and other um, tax saving strategies. And it's a really good hedge against inflation as you know, you own the, the hard asset for a longer period of time. Um, you know, you've got rent inflation that helps 
Um, all of these things make sense in a volatile whipsaw market that everyone's freaking out. Just don't stand there and do nothing. The people that are, if, if anyone is canceling their contracts, they're just using fear and that for the other, I've got other investors calling me saying, Morgan, I've got cash, I'm ready to buy. What do you got? You know, same thing. Yeah, it's time to jump in, you know, and there is, there's, there's a river of blood flowing through the streets right now. People are very scared. Uh, my opinion, strip down, get naked and go swimming. Because <laughs> now it's when you want to stand, when, when this is all settled and you're standing up, you need to look like that movie, Carrie, just covered in blood scenes, search out. You know, if you're yeah. just getting it done, you know, it looked like you just went to battle because you did. Yeah. You're one of the ones who went running into the battle to, to go and kick ass. You know, and, you know, it, it, I guess I didn't even explain my, my, my attire here because I'm supposed to be hunting right now. I'm supposed to be getting bloody right now. Um, but I was supposed to be in uh, New Zealand hunting. The virus screwed my trip. So they locked the borders and I couldn't get in. But ultimately, I'm hunting anyway. I figured I'm just going to wear my camos. I was going to wear anyway. I'm going to hunt for ways to help my clients attack the situation, feel more confident about what's going on, go after the opportunity. And how many times I've heard people say after they, like after the crash and all the other shit that happened way back in the past, like when we had the dot-com bubbles, all that stuff a year later, I talked to a lot of people saying, man, if I only just had the balls to have done that, I'm going to do that next time. Well, it's next time, right damn now. Get in there. What I couldn't agree with you more. And it's the, it's the I'll sit on the sidelines and be timid when it's the it's the time to take action and you know the people that and i've learned this just from my own personal experience is that when you everything that you want is on the other side of of your fear and then when you get on the other side you go oh it wasn't really that bad right it's just all construct in your mind and it's like you know are people going to need a place to live yes are they always going to need a place to live yes right are they going to figure out ways to pay for their rent Yes. And their mortgages, you know, if we're, if we're primary homeowners, yes, yes. And yes. So, uh, the time is now to jump in the, um, where are the rates now? What are you talking about as far as where, where do you see the rates now? Are they still on the higher side or do they rebound back? Like you just showed me. Um, they're still on the higher side for probably a few more days until we see that chart even out. Right. Okay. You know, we had that huge jump up and if it starts to kind of get to a point where it's a normal trading day for two or three We'll probably get the rates back down. I'm I'm guessing mid fours without points. If we get there, we jump in there. But to circle back to what you just said, um, fear is really only a 20 second window, right? I mean, there's been a lot of things I've done in my life, a lot of stupid shit that I've done in my life that 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 last 20 seconds before I jumped off that edge, or that last 20 seconds before I, said, before, I before I told the guys, okay, go, and I'm sitting on that bull at the cattle ranch, and they let go of shit, and I start taking off on this bull the last 20 seconds, which is the craziest thing. The, the, the worst of it, but then once you start going, you're just in it, right? Um, first time I jumped in the Jeep and went wheeling into some really crazy environments that had some really, uh, you know, cliffs on one side, whatever, it was only stepping into it. Once I got into it, I was concentrating on what I was doing. And it's the same thing with your business now. Concentrate on the business, just step into it, start concentrating on how to navigate it. The things that, that uh, it's not the rates that matter anyway. The rates don't matter at all. Mm -hmm. we've, we've proven that over and over and over again, that we live in an environment with a with taxes we live in an environment of inflation between the two of those things it smooths out what the rate is you know the one in the tax situation you just mentioned what the rates are we're we're still pricing in the mid to high fives most people are like oh that sucks well i have a 6.99 percent out in missouri right now that if i'm not cashing out i'm not refinancing and then the lowest rate i locked in the last few months actually in the last few years was four percent even for 20 percent down investment i got like two three people that rate that was it. In fact, one of them canceled this deal recently. I don't understand it, but he did because, well, there's the COVID thing. Like, well, there's the 4% thing. You should have just taken the damn deal. But, you know, you can't stop people from doing what they're going to do. So what you have here is this big range of these last couple of years. You had 4%, you had 6.99%, and we're going to be somewhere right in the middle. 0.00001% of the home buying population got a lower rate than we have available today since the cavemen were exchanging bone tools. And you're bitching about it. I, I, there's a lot of the homes I have don't have those rates. I've had, I don't know how I think about it. I don't think I have a single one of them that has a rate below five and a half of all the ones I've got. And I have properties in five states. Yeah. And I'm cash flowing. I'm kicking ass. I'm happy with it. And one of the ways I can really explain when it comes to the, let's, let's talk about the tax part of it. I got a story to share. Uh, Memphis, Tennessee, one client buying two properties, 
same floor plan, same rent, same price, same uh, street. The only difference was one was almost done being built and the other they had yet to break ground. So you have a house that's got workers putting a roof on, doing the trim, another is an empty lot. We closed on the first one, December of 2017. Um, I think it was 4.75% was his rate. Very happy with what he was getting out of the deal. Well, then quantitative tightening kicked in. Do you remember that whole thing? I do, yeah. We got the new Fed chairman, Jerome Powell, says we're going to take our foot on the gas. We're putting in nearly $20 billion a month on the average for the last since 2009 into the mortgage-backed securities market, keeping the, you know, and how mortgage-backed securities work is the more available to lend, the lower the price. It's a commodity. Higher okay. the price, lower the, lower the demand, or excuse me, higher the in inventory, lower the demand, the lower the price. Right now, we have low inventory, high demand, you get a high price, right? So what he did was he slowed down what they're injecting into it from the Fed. Therefore, the price went up. So come May of 2018, when the second property is done being built, I quoted his rate of 5.75, one full percentage point different. He looked at the, the payment on it. It was $49.97 more per month. He's like, I don't know that I'm going to do that deal. I'm like, well, what's your plan? He goes, I might just cancel. And I said, well, let me have you do one thing. Before you cancel, I need you to contact your CPA. He goes, and what am I going to do that for? So I need you to ask him, what is the difference you will pay in taxes on property number one with higher income versus property number two with lower income? Then ask him what is the difference in the tax deductions you'll get on property two with a higher interest rate than property one. And he should know this because it's now May and you just did your taxes, right? He said, sure. Three days went by, he called me back and says, let's move forward. I said, well, why are we moving forward? He says, I had him run the numbers and based upon what I had in taxes last month, he goes, it would no longer be $49.97 different per month. After filing my taxes, it'd be $3.55. So we're moving forward understand that we have things in place with your business. This is a business. It's not just cash flow, not just cash on cash return. There's more facets associated with this. And if you've got a business that will produce any sort of revenue and then being able to smooth itself out with taxes, and then you've got a tenant paying off the note. I mean, let's just think about this. You put buy a hundred thousand dollar property, you put 20% down and they pay off the 80 grand over 30 years. That's equal to $2,666.66 per year for 30 years. That's growing your 20 grand by 13.33% of the original 20 grand every year. But wh why is that not a bad deal? <laughs> that's, you know, it doesn't matter what the rate is. That's just paying off the note. Right. You know, if anybody had a stock account that, that had that, let's imagine you had a stock account that would, would tradition, that would always perform like that. You'd be fully justified to climb on your roof, drop your pants and show the whole neighborhood how big your balls are. And you would do it. <laughs> but now for some reason, they'd step back when it's real estate and it's like not as good a deal. And that's just only one piece. That's amortization. Now we got taxes. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about this conversation is that so I think so many investors, when they go into real estate, they're just focused on cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. But there's, there's, I, there's five basic ways. And there's even more ways that real estate pays you other than the five that, I'll mention here, but you mentioned one of them, the amortization schedule, the loan pay down, the tenants doing that for, or the residents doing that for the investor. You get the appreciation, which real estate in my lifetime, and I'm almost 50, I've never seen it go to zero. Does it fluctuate up and down? Yes. Does it fluctuate up and down in, in more markets um, than others? Yes. Um, it, but some of these cash flow markets that, we're, that I'm in, um, it's, you know, it doesn't matter what the housing values do. The rents just keep you know, it's slowly and incrementally going up over time. So you've got, um, you know, the, the rental property, the owning the property pays you through appreciation. I just call it, just call it phantom money. It's money that shows up just by you owning the asset. Let's say you bought a property today and it sat vacant for three months. And let's say that market was appreciating. And at least with the ones that I've been looking at, the zip codes that I've uh, researched here recently, um, the lowest I saw was 5.4. The highest I saw was 18.2 and all kinds of appreciation rates in between, right? So even if you bought a rental property and it sat, let's say it sat vacant for three months, but you got an 8% return in that year on the value of that property going up, that's a return that people just don't think about, right? So um, rate of return, and, I, and I've had to, I want to share this actually right here because I'm thinking about it now. And I think about the conversations that I've had, Aaron, it is astounding to me, surprising, I should say, 
of how many investors I talk with. And I just ask them how they calculate or what the rate of return formula is. And a lot of them don't really know. And I don't hold that against them. I just realized that in the United States, there's this financial illiteracy um, that is prevalent. It doesn't matter if you're a PhD or you're a brand new college student. It's just not taught anywhere unless you're seeking it out. You've got to seek it out. And then you recognize that real estate is not just about the cash flow. It's about the five ways that it pays you. And so you earn um, through uh, appreciation and right, rate of return is profit divided by equity. What you make divided by what you have in on the deal. So if your $100,000 door that you were mentioning, let's say it appreciated 6%, which is the average across the United States, that means that how that that piece of property went from 100,000 to 106,000. That 6,000 is profit to you in 12 months, right? So you take your profit of 6,000 and you divide it by your equity. Let's say you put 20% down on that $100,000 house. Your 6,000 divided by your 20,000 comes up to a 30% rate of return. Okay, let's cut it in half for all the cynics out there, for all the skeptics that are like, oh, that's not true. Cut it in half, let's get, you get 3% appreciation on that on that asset on that hard asset which you don't really get on other things right you've got this hard asset it appreciates now instead of 30 percent return you're getting 15 percent and that's just on the that's only on one factor of uh real estate how you earn the second is cash flow right let's say you make 150 bucks a month which is the low on the low end but you say make 150 bucks um every single month for the next 12 months that's 1800 dollars. that's that's profit Right. That's and everyone's focus. Most investors are focused on that cash on cash return. They want to just they want to know what that is. Right. And and so the you know, your your eighteen hundred divided by your twenty percent down your twenty thousand uh, produces a nine percent return on your money. Right. So you got thirty percent on appreciation, nine percent on cash flow. Then you've got the loan pay down, which was you, you were referring to. Right, so um, mortgage payments have two parts to it. They have the interest and the principal. Interest is the only expense there. Principal is like putting money back into your own account every single year, and each year it increases. There, you, you pay more principal down, so that's profit to you. So on a, you could probably figure this out, but on a eighty thousand dollar note at five percent um, for thirty years, you, you know, principal paid on the first year a thousand bucks somewhere on there. If it, it's not even that. I mean, the first five years is almost all interest. So I tell everybody, every time you refinance in that first five years, you're screwing yourself because yeah. you're not even paying me. You're, you're literally locking yourself into an interest period over and over and over again. Quit that shit too. If you're not pulling cash out, don't do it for rate. I, I, that was a lot of my calls. And one of the things you really brought up, I think that people need to pay close attention to is in an environment where property values may have gone down, or the stock values have gone down, the value of the dollar keeps going down. We'll get into that in a second. The one thing that consistently goes up is rent. Constantly, always has gone up. Look at the history, find every chart you can. Every chart I've seen that's a viable chart, not some jerk off chart, shows rents going up. What, and why? Because we live in an inflationary environment. You know what the rate of inflation is today? What, what's the published rate of inflation that you has, have heard last? Um, I would, so I haven't looked at it recently, but I know it's like they, the government reports it at around 2%, which I'm not a big believer of what they publish. Yeah. You live in California because you don't know damn well they're full of crap. So exactly. they claimed 1.5. Okay. You know, so the Fed's saying 1.5%. Are you kidding me? 1.5%? That's, what are you looking at? Well, they're looking at specific items that they can control with monetary policy. They're not looking at what everybody spends money on. So I always tell people, you got to go to chapwoodindex.com. You got to go to johnwilliamshadowstats.com. You got to look at the, the alternate data there and you look at those charts. The average is probably pushing 9% across the United States. Mm -hmm. You're in mm -hmm. Southern California, you're, you're 10 to 12. Yeah. If, you're in, if you're in San Jose, you're 13. So that's just, uh, that's just averaging the, the standard things people spend money on every year. What do you think? What do you think inflation on toilet paper is right now? <laughs> it's a hot commodity. I don't know the black market. <laughs> it is up there. We're talking about low supply and high demand. High that's demand. interest rates right now, guys. That's that's interest rates right now. It's the toilet paper index. The there is just volatile supply, huge demand, and we're seeing we're seeing the price go up. So I'm going to show you something, which is something that investors are not looking at. I'm going to do another quick share screen here. Do it. Um, this to me is the most powerful thing when it comes to real estate investing. 
and it has to do with um, with your uh, tax. Well, it has to do really with inflation. We just talked about. So let's just say 5.5 percent. We're doing a 30-year loan today, um, and we're going to go with a hundred thousand dollar purchase, eighty thousand dollar loan, so 20 percent down. At five and a half percent, you're going to pay back your your um, I need to change this. I actually typed the wrong spot. Yes, I say. So you're going to be paying the eighty thousand back. That's the principal right here. Mm -hmm. So you got a principal and interest payment of four hundred fifty-four dollars and twenty-three cents. You're going to pay eighty-three thousand five hundred twenty-three dollars and twenty-three cents in interest over thirty years. That's one hundred sixty-three grand. That's more than double, right? What you borrowed. People freak out about that. They're thinking, I'm paying double. That means. You know, Einstein's compound interest thing of it being the eighth wonder of the world is kicking my ass. What, what, what Einstein did not talk about was an inflationary environment. We live in this rate of inflation that we know is, is pushing 10%. Where you're at, a whole lot higher. Yeah. Let's say the average annual inflation right now, because people are not spending much uh, like they were before because they're freaking out, except unless they find toilet paper on the rack, they're going to spend it. So we've got 7% inflation, right? At 7% inflation, that means the dollar is devaluing by 7% of its buying power on an annual basis. It never goes to zero, though. Really, really weird dynamic that it never becomes worth nothing, but it loses its buying power year over year. Well, if that's the case, we get to raise rents, as we just established. You know what the average rental increase is nationally? And I could be wrong. I'm just going off of what I'd heard recently. I don't know the answer to that. My, what I heard was 3.6%. So... In an environment like this, with a 1% rent-to-value ratio, you would be running this house for 1000 bucks a month, right? Mm -hmm. So if we were able to raise it 3%, that means they'd be able to raise it, say, $300. Actually, 3% on 1000 is only 30 bucks, right? Yeah. Not exciting. 30 bucks doesn't get people out of bed anymore. Now, it's two lattes in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about 30 bucks, you're like, man, 30 bucks kind of sucks. But if you're getting $200 a month in cash flow, your cash flow just jumped by 30 bucks the year two, that's a 15% compound growth in your cash flow. That's huge. So that's another growth right there. The other thing is they don't get to raise this $454.23 payment every year to pace inflation. Go look along this chart here on that first column, it's $454.23 for all 365 pay or 360 payments. Well, when you think about that, the exact same dollar amount for 30 years, Three hundred, four hundred and fifty-four dollars and twenty-three cents. I gotta find my cursor. It disappeared on me. Here we go. Got it. For the next thirty years, that means somebody is willing to accept their eighty grand back stretch over that period of time. If you look into this here, the inflation-adjusted payment, and you recalculate every dollar for thirty years as it leaves your hands, it stays in your pocket. You're handing it back incrementally, right? Four fifty-four twenty-three every month. When you recalculate it every month for that thirty years. All, you're not giving them back 80,000. You're not giving them 83,523. You're giving them 68,274 in actual dollar value over 30 years. Oh. I'm asking you who's screwing who at this point. Oh, and see that, okay, that's probably the best explanation visually that I've ever seen because um, the, one of the, I was talking about the, the five ways that real estate pays you. The last one was the inflation hedge. Um, and no one's ever actually shown me how the calculation works. I just understood it conceptually because the, the banker um, is asking you to say, hey, you know, I'm gonna, we're gonna start this loan here in 2020. In 2030, I'm still gonna ask you to pay the same dollar amount. So even though you yep. make more money, even though the cost of living increases, I'm not asking you to pay me back in inflation adjusted dollars. I'm asking you to pay me back in nominal dollars, but I've never seen it depicted that way. So now I want to steal that because now it's recorded. I want that worksheet. <laughs> well, it, well it, it, the worksheet only exists on two computers. Mine and the guy who created it was a professor of accounting at Kennesaw State University. Now, uh, I think you might even know John Abernathy, but he and his team uh, uh, had created that. I'm actually creating a, 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 a version of it in an app. So I've app builders actually build it. You will have the calculator. Okay. Right. So okay. this will be built out. Everybody's going to have this because ultimately there's so much more value in real estate than what's my cash flow. Yeah. And, and to go back to the big short, I'm going to quote what one of those guys was talking about. He says, you know, the real value of real estate is like a Sunday. You know, you've got the you've got the the ice cream, you got the whipped cream, you got the sprinkles, you got the nuts. But then there's the cherry. The cherry is the cash flow. That's not the Sunday at all. That's just the cherry. All the other stuff we just talked about and the bigger portion of it, the one where all the ice cream is at, the where that fills the bowl, that's inflation. 
that's amortization of your loan in an inflationary environment. You get to take compound interest and beat its ass with inflation. There's no two, there's never ever in history in any other environment where you can take two negatives, compound interest and inflation, and actually make it work for you. If you put them together in the right environment, that is properly leveraged real estate for a long period of time, they just beat the hell out of each other in your, in your benefit. Oh my gosh, that was like, you couldn't have said that any more beautifully. And that's what I really want to emphasize for anyone that's listening. Like, look, it's not just about the cash flow. It's not just about the rate. It's about the multiple ways that rental properties or hard assets pay you. Um, and you take these two things, uh, the, the compound interest and the inflation, and you get them to work on your side. If you can get that, if you get that concept out of this call, um, and you tack it on to what you're focused on as far as the, the, the cash flow that you get out of a rental property, you're really starting to expand your mind and really expand your business because your rental property portfolio is your business and you've got to run it like a business and understand all the factors that affect your business positively and negatively. And what Aaron was just sharing there is that these are uh, very positive things that affect your um your real estate holdings, but if you don't have the real estate, if you don't have the property, then you don't get any of these benefits. It doesn't work, right? Is there not, any- It there, doesn't, not at all. You can't get in anything else. You can't go and put money in anything else whatsoever and get these kind of benefits. You know, there, it, it just hasn't been built that way, right? And, and what we're doing, the reason why you have all these benefits in there, in just, just Aaron's opinion, I haven't gone in and sat in. I sat in the halls of Congress. I sat in the Senate. I talked to these guys about, about finance and all the, the ways that they should be helping the real estate investor. But I wasn't there when they created all the rules. Ultimately, it's designed to benefit people who create jobs and create housing. That's what you're doing here, creating jobs and creating housing. And then you're creating for yourself financial freedom to choose what to do with your tax money rather than having to take your taxes and hand it in there, and then letting somebody in the, in the government decide where to, where to deploy those taxes, you get to keep them and deploy them how you want to into your real estate investment business. So there's two different types of people, right? There's those who create jobs and housing, and there's those who come home from their nine to five and sit on their cooler in their driveway and work on their fantasy football league. And they're going to pay taxes because they're the ones using the street to get to their driveway. They're, they have to pay to, to cover everything else where the real estate investors already paying for those things. So why are we going to tax them on something they're already, they're already doing for our economy? So yeah. it, the real estate investors, I think, that really, really start to embrace the thought process that there's multiple facets, how it's being, um, how their uh, business is growing and how their assets are growing or how their life is improving, but it's hard to see it. It's really easy to see the cash flow going up in your bank account. I get that. Yeah. But you have to look past that and you need the right team with the right tools to show you what to look at. And you got to feel good about the fact that you're not just getting a statement every month is that your property value went up. I mean, how many people get a stock account? This is, oh, look at the value of your stock, but they never realize it. I mean, I'm getting calls like you wouldn't believe about people tell me how they're broke. I'm like, how are you broke? He goes, everything I've got in the stock market is worth hardly anything now. Well, were you using it? He goes, well, no. Were you, were you living off that money? He's like, no. Then you're no broke, more broke than you were the day before. It's exactly the same. You'll have, still have X amount of shares. You just sit on them longer. Mm -hmm. And guess what? In the end of the year, they'll probably be up. And I would imagine you should probably get the hell out. <laughs> and divert some of the capital into some hard assets that are going to earn you in multiple ways. So let me summarize because I think I may have lost some people along the way. Um, we, you and I, maybe we have ADHD and we're just like off on different tangents, but let me just, that's one of the things I'm best at. I've been blessed with the ability to hit everything at the exact same time with the same bullet. <laughs> awesome. So in summary, let's think about this. Um, for those investors out there that are thinking about getting into real estate or already in real estate or going or freaking out because of, um, this COVID thing and how it's going to affect their rents and their cash flow, just think it's beyond cash flow, right? There are five ways that rental properties or hard assets pay you. So you've got appreciation. That's phantom money that's just going to happen by you holding onto the asset by supply and demand. Like it's so true. When the supply is low, the demand is high, your value shoot up. It's just the way that it works, people. And anything, not just in rental properties, but appreciation is number one. Number two is cash flow. Don't get focused on the cash flow. It's part of the it's part of the equation, but it's not it's not the end all be all everything. Then you've got the um, uh, the loan paid on or the amortization schedule that works that works in your benefit. 
Uh, then you've got the tax benefits that come. So what many, many people don't recognize, and it had and Robert Kiyosaki had to say this to me through a video or whatever, um, for me to get this. And uh, why is this stuck there? Um, it, it does, can you see me, Aaron, still? I can see you just fine. Okay, so I've got this weird pop-up box um, by iCloud. It's doing something anyway. So I'll just keep talking. Um, but the, the U.S. government, they say, here, U.S. government, they want U.S. citizens to help them do certain things. And if you behave in a certain way, then you get rewarded by you keeping more of your money and not having to pay that in taxes. So what Aaron, what you were referring to is the guy that comes home after his nine to five job and contributes nothing to housing, nothing to the agriculture, nothing to ex exploratory oil and gas um, or energy development in the United States, they don't get, they only get a limited amount of deductions, right? But if you, as a U.S. citizen, uh, team up with the U.S. government and you help house people and you help um, create uh, for, grow food here uh, domestically, if you help uh, drill and find domestic oil and gas resources um, and help keep that all within the United States, then the U.S. government says, thank you for helping us create jobs. Thank you for helping us house people. And because of the risk that you took, because you're contributing to things that we are trying to have good outcomes with together, then you get to keep more of your money. It just, it's that how, it, that's how it works. You get rewarded for the risks that you take. And if you house people, you get to write off the wear and tear uh, on that structure, right? You get to depreciate that asset over 27 and a half years. Why they came up with that number, I have no idea. I would be really interested if you know, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, I've never actually researched it. I'm gonna do some digging. Yeah, but they come up with this random number of 27 and a half years, which means if you have 10 single family rental properties, you can depreciate every single one of those assets every single year for the next 27 and a half years, which means you're paying less money, which means you're keeping more money in your pocket, which when you look at when you plug that, that profit back into the rate of return equation of profit divided by equity, there's the fourth way that you're earning appreciation, cash flow, loan pay down, depreciation. And then as Aaron so beautifully, and I want to steal it from him, showed you and illustrated in this, and I would stop, record, rewind, play back and watch that again, is how uh, the inflation hedge of owning a hard asset benefits you because you've got those two, um, how you were said, the, the compound interest and um, inflation working inflation. into working in your favor. So the message here is investors, people, is cash flow is just one part of it. Don't get so micro focused on the cash flow that you're blind to the other ways that hard assets like real estate pay you. And don't get hung up on the rate because the rate is not going to, it's just a small part of all the ways that you earn. And this is why the majority of the wealthy in the United States and probably throughout the United or the world have always added real estate, hard assets to their portfolio because it is the one stable wealth builder that I've seen and personally have experienced since I left the W2 world uh, 10 years ago and have been in real estate ever since. It has been the game changer for me and my family and I've seen it be a game changer for other families as well who were willing to take the risk face their fear, take action when others are running in the opposite direction. You know, there's a, there's a um, statement that a friend of mine, uh, or actually it was a mentor coach, and he, I remember he used this term and he said, don't be a MUBA. <laughs> I'm like scratching my head. I'm like, Never heard of that one. what the hell is a MUBA? Well, cows and sheep, they're herd animals. They moo and they baa, they just moo baa. They just follow the herd. They, they don't even know where you're going. You're just following the herd. Don't be a move off. Use what Warren Buffett says about when um, people are fearful, be greedy. And when people are greedy, be fearful. We are in that time right now where people are fearful. You can feel it. People are talking about it. And just watch the news. It's all over the place. Oh, another case. Oh, this. It doesn't mean the world stopped. It doesn't mean that all the ways that real estate pays you go away. They're still there. Go through the fire. Walk through it. Keep the, keep the contract. Go for it because this is where you will amount and build the wealth that others won't and will be sitting on the sidelines going, man, I wish I wish I would have done that when that happened. Don't be one of those. I just got on my stuff. Yeah, <laughs> this is 
this is this is the time. And like I said, everybody says, you know, I want, I wish I was done when it happened. We're telling you it's happening now. Jump in it. Yeah. It's a great opportunity for you to do something. I, it, I, 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 I had all kinds of stuff I was saying back out during the crash, the, the last crash. Well, I'm, I'm doing exactly what I said I would do. I'm digging in. I'm pushing hard. I'm going out there. I'm marking harder than I ever had in my entire career right now. The books that just came out, I'm writing more books. I got three more with the editor. I'm not stopping. Like I said before, when I go to the grave, I'm coming in hot, and I've got at least 25 years left in what's left of these bones. <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm the same way. I'm all, all in is what I am. So let me switch gears for one bit, minute here, Aaron, because I know I'm not, I haven't been watching the time, but I know people only have a short attention span. We don't want to keep this going on, although I'm enjoying you and the conversation and all your little isms that you, that you share here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but the thing I want to, I think there's, I think what's on some investors' mind is maybe they find themselves over leveraged. Maybe they um, were very excited and they, they bought a bunch of rental properties all at the same time. Um, maybe there's the prospect that this thing may go longer. We don't know. Right now, everything is showing that the rents are coming in um, and it's good. It may change in the next 30 days, right? So if that happens and rents you know because people are losing jobs and if people aren't able to pay all of the rent and there's going to be some debt service that needs to be covered by the borrower by the investor and maybe they stretch themselves too tight because they were too thin because they were not managing their business properly as you referred to it earlier in the call they're gonna they're gonna find themselves in a position for help they are going to need help probably to get them through to be able to pay their debt service through this particular um, very unprecedented time with this infectious virus spreading. So um, what are some of the options available to say over leveraged investors that went in too tight that need help um, paying their debt service over the next few months? What do you got? Well, we also, we do realize that it's not going to be just the renters who have a difficult time when it comes to, you know, their income versus their expenses, right? It can also be the investors. The investors, a lot of them have W-2 employment as well. They, they have great jobs, but they may be also a job affected by what's being required with the, you know, with the, the segregation of sorts and the, I don't call it quarantining quite yet, but there's people being affected by this and it's going to be a lot of different folks. And if that's the case, they have come out with, with forbearance rules. Now, it's not call Aaron Chapman and he's going to give you the thumbs up and go ahead and stop paying. That's not how it works. You're going to get out your, your mortgage statement regardless of who it is. You don't have to be doing a loan with Security National. It could be any lender in the world you've got a loan with. And you call the 800 number and ask them to put you through to whoever needs to discuss that. I know the way that forbearance works, have it, as I have seen, each one's going to have the rules and how they go about it. But all they're doing is postponing their payment. You're not, you're not getting a freebie for three, four months. Mm -hmm. That money you signed on that you're going to make a payment come hell or high water. Well, we got high water right now. So because of that scenario, you're going to explain to them that they're going to say, okay, we can go, whether it be one month, two months, four months, we'll do what they call a forbearance. We're going to, if you got a thousand dollar a month payment and we're going to put this off for four months, that means you go four months without making that payment. But month five, you got the thousand dollars due on month five plus the other four months. You could be throwing down that four grand right then, total five grand right there that one on that one payment so but i'm sure they got ways to work with that whether you spread it over a period of time i can't speak to that so that's where you absolutely have to talk to them and you have to figure okay what is the options what is my specific plan because it's going to change from person to person and then they have to put notes in your file on the plan because if you don't you say well the government said we had a forbearance i'm just not going to make payments for five months can't do that because then it just shows you up as delinquent they're going to foreclose on your ass right um so you don't, you don't want to play that game and when it comes to this, it's just if you're worried about it, if you're stressing about this right now, you just freaked out because of what was going on in the market. You need to reevaluate how you structured your business. Mm -hmm. If your business is set up to where it can't weather a rumor, let's just talk about what this is, guys. I get that the, my wife's in the in the uh, medical industry. She's a charge nurse at an ER. She's a float nurse. She's one of those ones that deals with all the traumas. They they've had patients with this roll through their ER. She's been exposed. Believe me, this is a real thing to me, you know, but it doesn't change the fact that the virus is something that healthy people have been able to overcome. It's not any different than the flu from what I understand. I mean, it's all still fairly new to us, but what we have here is great marketing 
phenomenal marketing on this virus that the whole world is freaked out. And if great marketing has made you question your business strategy, you got to get with your team. Get with Maureen, get with the team at Spartan, get with myself and my team, schedule that call with Samantha. Let's see where your holes are and see if we can shore that up. Because this is not the only time this is going to happen. I know these last 10 years with nothing but lemonade and brownies for free, and now you got to do your own damn baking. So let's start baking. Let's figure out what the recipe is. Let's start figuring this out because I want your business to work regardless of what happens. You shouldn't have to have rosy uh, uh, future for it to work out. It needs to work in all environments and all situations. Yeah, so this is just definitely time to kind of do um, to a, do a business checkup, right? To look at yourself and your position and think about emotionally where you're feeling. If you're feeling stressed out and worried, then there needs to be some um, some edits done to your business, right? You need to kind of reevaluate and go, how am I going to position myself better so that should something like this ever happen again um, or any situation that pops up, you're still you're still feeling comfortable, you're still feeling confident, you're still feeling good with how um, you arranged your business. So um, that was really sort of the, the purpose of this call was to say, one, look, don't panic, don't freak out, just be smarter in your business, figure out what needs to be done, plug up the holes, um, add new strategies if you need to. Uh, and the only way that you're gonna know how to do that is not by retracting and freezing and doing nothing and sitting back on the sidelines waiting to see what happens. You're missing so much opportunity. There's crisis opportunity, uh, there's crisis management and then there's crisis opportunity. There is so much opportunity right now in the marketplace. You just have to shift the gears and not listen to all the hype and all the fear and not be paralyzed by the fear, but actually be um, motivated and get mobile with um, follow, not following the herd. Don't follow the herd. Don't be a move off. <laughs> Well, there's that, and there's also cultivating the human capital you have around you. Let me just, let's just speak of your, your tenant, for instance. I mean, your tenant right now is also having the same kind of freak out. They're looking for somebody to give them a little bit of a cozy feeling. When you're thinking about a tenant, they think the landlord is over here, just can't wait to just knock them to the ground and take from them, right? That's how you're being perceived. You're a damn landlord. They're getting marketing against landlords. You need to be that type of individual. I reached out to mine. My tenants say, hey, how are you doing? Is everything okay? And they're, they're great. Everything's fine. They did ask me what they need to you know, cut the lease in half and, and buy a house. I'm like, well, shit, that's not the way it's supposed to go. You're supposed to ride that thing out, right? But, so we're working on that. So they're doing that, that well. But also, you, know, you also have to reach out to them and say, hey, just let me know if there's anything going on that I can help you with. You know, let me know if you run into some problems with the job. If you get ahead of it, now it's, wait a minute, that guy called me up. That guy was really, really cool. Or that gal and they were they were there to help me. I don't want to not pay my my payment on them. I'm going to call them and say, listen, I'm running into problems. Well, if you've got cash flow, if you purchased your business, that that home is a business. If you purchase your business right, and you got two three hundred dollars in cash flow. You can say, hey, well, if you pay me by the tenth of the month, all I'll do is I'll, I know you're struggling, but I'll knock a hundred bucks off. It's not going to hurt you that hundred bucks. It shouldn't. Let's put it that way. If your if your lifestyle is of such that hundred bucks going to kick your ass, somebody should kick your ass. Well, then. We're talking about the the individual here. They're going to see a hundred bucks come off. They're like, wow, that's awesome. They're going to figure out how do I maintain my rent? You got to think about how humans see this, yeah. right? Now you're going to find a few that are going to try and take everything they can. I get that. But you going on the offensive, you getting out there and talk to your, to your tenants, make sure they're okay. Be the kind hearted person you should. They will then in turn take care of you. People tend to take care of each other. That gratitude is a, is an economy that continues to grow. If you don't act like that and you try and be hard-nosed, I guarantee they're going to come back at you the same way. That guy wants to be that way to me. He wants to push me and push late fees in a time like this. Guess what? I'm out in the dark by cover of darkness. I'm tearing out the carpet. I'm dumping concrete down his toilet. And I'm probably going to pee on the door handles. Just know that that's how they're thinking. I agree. So um, you're talking more about your individual tenants that you're calling directly. We have a lot of investors that um, rely on us to directly communicate with the, the residents. And so that's what we've been doing. We sent out a survey and we said, you know, is this COVID-19 and how is it affecting you? Um, because look, I mean, if you, if you, if we do, so like, let's say we do shoot up to 10% unemployment, does that mean 50% of your business is going to be unemployed? No, it doesn't quite work out that way, right? So this is not gonna affect everybody. It's gonna affect some people. So you have to identify who those um, residents are that are going to need assistance, a payment plan, a late, late, uh, waive the late fee, 
Um, you just got to know that there's a human side to this, that they're fearful and scared too. They've probably never been in this situation before. And so um, at, on this kind of scale, and so you've got to find ways. I like the human capital um, terminology. You've got, if you're a human to your residents and you show them that you're there really to assist and help them and work through, work with them through this difficult time, do you think that they're going to have loyalty to you and want to stay with you because you are that cool landlord, right? Or that cool property management company that looked out for them during a really difficult time. So that's how we are thinking over here at Spartan. And um, I've actually instructed my team. I was thinking last night, I couldn't sleep. I was thinking about how, what are ways that I could help the investor through this, navigate through this and how, what's the, what are the ways that we can help the resident? navigate through this way. And, and, and if a resident finds themselves in a situation where they had income and now they have no income because the job is closed or gone, then they need to find sources of income, right? So in, in Birmingham right now, Publix is hiring, Shipt is hiring, um, uh, um, Amazon is hiring, right? So are the people that are losing jobs, can we redirect them to resources and companies that are hiring? Can we help them with the hiring process? Get them the links to the application, right? So be a resource to That's them. awesome. Redirect them to where they could get some help. And then, and for those that are, um, you know, in my mind, I'm like, look, you have no income, you've got to have income. And if we can get you a new, we can redirect you to a new job, awesome. If we can't, we've got to get you on, on unemployment. And some people have never even done that before. They don't even know where to go. Do they even qualify? How do they apply? Where do they, what do they do? And so I've got my team now working on, here are the steps that you need to do to, uh, or to, to apply for unemployment. And online, I read through Birmingham City that if you, or sorry, that the, um, uh, the, the federal site, that if you get your application in with the supporting documentation all in one shot, you can expect to check in two to three weeks, right? So, okay. um, so I'm like that. And then you've got the stimulus package that um, the government is working on and that, you know, they're talking about a $1,500 check to every single social security number in the United States, right? If that were to happen, so they would have some severance from where they were, maybe some vacation time that they got paid. Then they have this $1,500 should it pass. Um, and then you're helping them get onto the unemployment or find another job. So it's a way to help someone that feels scared and helpless and they feel, oh my God, the big bad landlord is going to come and, you know, hammer me. I don't want to hammer. We don't want to hammer you. We want to help the resident get the situation resolved so that I can also meet, the sat meet and satisfy the needs of my investor who can meet and satisfy the needs of the lender, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, it takes two sides of it to that be a successful, actually three sides to be a successful business. You need great management, you need great uh, occupant, a great owner and all of them have to go into it with a positive attitude being being able to it's a sit face the problem if any one of those wants to be opposite of that then then you have problems and the best way to to create to avoid there becoming a problem is be preemptive just like what you guys are doing that's awesome i didn't know you were doing that going after helping them to file for unemployment help them find jobs I mean, yes. holy hell i mean who, who would want to work with anybody else but a group that's willing to do something like that that's yeah. that's human capital farming like I've never heard. Well, thank you. The you know there's um, it's the heart of the leadership team, and it's all about just wanting to do the right thing by by people. And um, we've always that's been our premise since day one. You just find how you find out who you really are when you've got a situation like this. Um, and yeah. it's not it's not a hard nosed position. It's like okay, let's see how I can bring value. Let's see how we can help um, both the investor and the resident navigate this difficult time. And there, there will be some challenges, but just know that there are people and companies that are out there really focused on solutions, having a positive attitude, um, and giving them options um, to get through it. So. Oh, right on. You guys are badasses. That's cool. That was very, very, very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I will wrap this up and uh, say thank you to Aaron. You, by the way, are always entertaining. And informative, like you've got this perfect <laughs> combination of just entertainment and high education, great content. So I thank you so much for, for being here and, and helping be a calm voice in a storm of uncertainty. I think what you've shared, um, especially just when you really break this investment opportunity down 
don't just focus on the cash flow. It's just part of it. There's so many other ways that real estate pays you. And I love the example that you gave about, um, you know, you're really not paying 83,000 in interest on that property. You're only paying 68,000 because of the devaluation of the mortgage over time uh, through um, inflation. So um, I love that. I want that, make that app, get it out. I was like, what? I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working, I'll beat on those guys. I've already leaned on them pretty hard. Now it's like, they just gotta finish getting the calculators to work exactly the way they should. We're gonna get out. In fact, do you wanna be one of my betas? I would love to, yes, 100%, I'm in. Okay, then you're, you're my beta tester. In fact, I'll just make Spartan invest the beta testers of this thing, okay. and we'll go from there and we'll get this thing cleaned up. So that's awesome, now I got my beta group. Yeah. You check this awesome. out. No. <laughs> now I get to get awesome compliments from Maureen again, now I get a beta group. What else might I get out of this thing? This is, maybe we shouldn't stop the call. I could become a millionaire by the end of this conversation. Well, this is an multi. example of collaboration. This is what you do when you know, you've, you've got a network. One of the things that I've learned is that in order to be successful, you, you're not gonna be successful sitting in your desk all alone by yourself, worrying, you've gotta get out there, network, talk to people, leverage their resources, time, um, network, uh, people, money, everything. You just gotta leverage, leverage, leverage. It's the same thing here. Um, with the um, opportunity to continue to leverage into rental properties. And you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I um, will have another video coming out here, uh, more focused on the residents, right? This is really more for, to the, for the investors, for towards the investors. Um, we've got another one that I'm gonna do for residents and how to help them navigate this challenging time. So it's all about teamwork, collaboration, um, working together, having a positive attitude, and just knowing that, um, you know, you'll get, we got through it. We got through SARS, H1N1, swine flu. By the way, if you haven't paid attention, China, their first cases started, well, they reported the first cases in December. Um, people are back to work in March. There was a four month time period. So that means there's an end to this. This is, this is yep. the moment in time. <laughs> so we just have to exactly. navigate the next few moments, right? The next few months. Um, and then the, the economy will come roaring back the way that it always does. It's the human resilient spirit. It's just how we work. So anyway, on that one, any, Aaron, anything last, any last comments, snide remarks? No, I just thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for letting me be on it, for being participating in this, to work with you guys, work with your investors. I feel very, very blessed that you guys have trusted me with your business, that section of it. And um, I'm looking forward to trying to continue to see how this shakes out because we're all gonna come out better, stronger, with a more resilient business as a result of it. So I'm just looking to see, forward to seeing how it all rolls out. Thank you. Me too. Thank you, Aaron, so much. All right, guys, well, tune into the next video. You guys take care, be well, stay safe, practice social distancing, wash your hands, be kind to one another, take care of one another. Thank you so much. Exactly. The only reason the thing is doing what it's doing is because humans are freaking out. Quit it. Quit it. <laughs> Peace.